So uh, my next uh, question relates to China. And a lot of people are saying that, uh, Professor Wang, uh, China seemed to be the biggest uh, uh, winner out of the current trajectory if this current trajectory is sustained. So uh, number one, do you believe in this? Uh, and number two, everybody <coughs> that is involved in the process talks about the red lines uh, in the process. Are there any red lines for China as we move on? <coughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, I think, yes, in terms of security, China is very happy with the recent thaw of tensions between the United States and, and North Korea and the improvement of South-North uh, relations. Uh, however, many in China's policy circles <coughs> have the suspicion that whether it is a question whether Kim Jong-un is very sincere in his commitment to denuclearization. So in, in a sense, China is a, a beneficiary uh, because <coughs> the bottom line of China's policy toward North Korea is no conflict. And North Korea's political survival is very important to China. Another thing China is scared about is uh, denuclearization that North Korea is committed to. But there are suspicions in China uh, toward both the United States and North Korea. And I think most Chinese in political circles say that the United States rather than North Korea is the major source of instability. Uh, they see that uh, the United States is is targeting at North Korea superficially, but the long-term target is not the, uh, North Korea, but China. Look at that, for instance. It is designed, uh, to, it is, the, the, the Americans say that the threat is directed at, uh, against North Korea. But most people, military specialists in China is, is saying, are saying that uh, that is against China. And there are even suspicions that uh, North Korea could reach a tacit understanding or some kind of agreement that the North Koreans can keep some of the nuclear devices uh, if they, they are not threatened in the United States. So the worry is that in the long run, you see a, a, a nuclear weapons kept in North Korea could be turned against China because it is closer to, the, to China and uh, a, along with the improvement of uh, North Korean, US, North Korean, South Korean relationship, China might lose something. Uh, that is a worry uh, because most Chinese see the United States as a major <coughs> security threat. Uh, whether Kim Jong-un and uh, Trump will talk about China in what way they will refer to China. Will Kim Jong-un say very good things about China uh, in his discussion with Trump? Or will Trump say very good things about China in his discussion with, with Kim Jong-un? The Chinese are very suspicious. But then also the Americans are suspicious as well because they don't know what Kim Jong-un and uh, uh, Xi Jinping talked about in their three <coughs> rounds of uh, uh, conversations uh, in, in China. And Xi Jinping may go to North Korea for an uh, a state visit uh, maybe in the next few months. So we don't know the, exactly what is happening. But one thing that is very peculiar uh, between China and North Korea is their uh, long-term ideological affinity. That ideological f f affinity has existed ever since the two uh, com communist parties took power in the late 1940s. And lately, China sends its uh, 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 very high-ranking <coughs> official by the name of uh, Li Zhanshu to North Korea to join the celebration of North Korea's uh, establishment uh, uh, or the, their anniversary 70th uh, 
uh, 70th anniversary of the establishment of the uh, DPRK. And I think the Chinese highly value the party-to-party -party relationship, uh, or even the top priorities, the party-to-party -party relationship rather than state-to-state -state relationship. So I uh, don't know whether the party, when they, the two communist parties get together, they will talk more about denuclearization of North Korea or their common grounds in resisting Americans uh, scheme to undermine the Communist Party's <coughs> leadership. So this is something we have to keep in mind. And uh, as I said before, uh, the, the, worst, uh, the, the worst scenario <coughs> in Chinese mindset is that <coughs> the United States may prefer to keep the nuclear threat alive so then can, they can justify uh, and uh, perpetuate U.S. military presence in Northeast Asia and to maintain U.S. security alliances with Japan and South Korea. So uh, I, I think this kind of distrust is not a plus in uh, U.S. China relations and that, that will endure for the time being. When the U.S.-China relationship is worsening, as we see it today, some in Beijing are further convinced that Washington is definitely trying to take advantage of its newly establishment uh, of ties with Pyongyang at the expense of China. And finally, my point is that the official uh, position toward the North Korean nuclear issue uh, in China will remain consistent. But given the softening of attitude of the Moon government and the Trump administration toward the DPRK, China is expected to resume economic cooperation with North Korea with less constraint. So my conclusion is that the likely outcome may be North Korea's gestures of denuclearization plus some superficial or artificial dis dismantlement of these nuclear sites. In exchange of East international sanctions and increased foreign trade, the DPRK may win broader international recognition without sacrificing the essence of the nuclear capacity. However, if it did, its demands are not satisfied, Pyongyang may again resort to the threatening of force. I hope Thank I'm you. not uh, right in, in this regard. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Wang.